Good morning, and welcome to the third day of Wikimania. <laughs> Having fun? Before we proceed to Sue Gardner's presentation, I would like to discuss our policy. Yesterday, in the presentation entitled Benevolent Dictator, Monarch, Spokesperson, the presenter included sexual images in his talk in violation of our friendly space policy. Why are you applauding that? I was not expecting that. <laughs> but seriously, but seriously, on behalf of the entire conference organizing committee, I apologize for the potential harm this may have caused some of our attendees. Being inclusive of all Wikimedians is personally important to the entire committee. We expect all our presenters to abide by the friendly space policy and will continue to enforce the policy. We want everyone who attends Wikimania to feel safe and welcome. <laughs> After the session yesterday, we held an open feedback session where the speaker and the audience were able to discuss the presentation and the full range of opinions it produced. I would like to thank everyone who participated in that session, including the speaker who quickly understood what had happened and immediately apologized. The speaker and I have agreed not to upload the video of the session, seeing as it violates our friendly space policy. In fact, I would like to, rec excuse me, I would like to remind all presenters that the conference is always under a friendly space policy, that the Wikimania Organizing Committee is dedicated to providing a harassment-free conference experience for everyone, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, disability, physical appearance, body size, race or religion. We do not tolerate harassment of conference participants in any form. To help ensure a friendly space for all our attendees, I would like to offer our assistance in reviewing presentations before they are delivered. You may sign up for a review at the help desk, but remember, if you are not sure if something belongs in the presentation, the right thing may be to leave it out. And I'd like to thank all of you for promoting a friendly space for all conference attendees. And now, I'd like to invite to the stage the Executive Director of the Wikimedia Foundation, Sue Gardner. <laughs> Who's that? That's so nice. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I, uh, I, I want to uh, start by acknowledging some weird stuff about the stage here. So every year I present at Wikimania, this I think is my fourth year presenting at Wikimania, and every year the difficulty level of my presentation seems to increase. So uh, this year I've got 20 minutes to talk you through the work of the Wikimedia Foundation over the last year and then going forward into 2012-13. That's a lot of stuff to get through in a brief period of time, so I want to acknowledge to the staff who are in the room, I am not going to appropriately recognize everything that you guys did. I'm going to skate quickly over the surface of things. It does not mean I do not love you and value your work. Um, the other thing that I want to say is uh, you can't see it from where you are, but there's an open pit in front of me, so I can't get any closer to you than this. <laughs> what that means is, if you're towards the back and you would like to move up, I would be really, really grateful. I'm not used to being this far away from people, and I'm at, come on, James Hallman, <laughs> and I'm having a little bit of trouble making out people's faces. I would love it if you would come forward. Really, like, it's fine. Take a minute, pick up your stuff. All those people in the Global Education Program t-shirts, I can see you. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to stand in the pit, but then you can't see me. And so here's what's going to happen. So I'm going to present. As I present, I'm going to be looking at the slides so I can speak to them because there's a lot of information on them. That's going to mean that I'm going to step backwards. I'm going to fall into the pit. <laughs> when I fall into the pit, please come and pick me up and brush me off <laughs> and get me back up on the stage. And if you think I might fall into the pit, feel free to shout out to me and to remind me that there's a pit here, okay? Because I like to be close to the people and I am feeling very, very far from all of you. Uh, so, before I begin, thank you so much. It's nine o'clock in the morning. It's day three, I think, of Wikimania. I think you are all superheroes for being in the audience at 9 a.m., so please give yourselves a round of applause for that. <laughs> And are you having a good Wikimania? <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? It's really good. Okay, so 
What I'm doing here, the purpose of this presentation is really simple. It's an accountability exercise. My job here is to tell you what the Wikimedia Foundation did in 2011-2012 and to tell you what we plan to do in 2012-13. And so why do I come to Wikimania to do this? I do it because in 2011-12, we brought in $34.8 million. The Wikimedia Foundation received $34.8 million uh, from donors in 192 countries around the world. Why did we get that money? We got it because of the work that the people in this room have done. So you're the people who write the projects. You're a proxy for all the people, the 80,000 people around the world, who write the projects. You earned the goodwill. I'm lucky enough to get to go around the world and present to various groups um, throughout the year, and I get washed in love and support and praise for the Wikimedia projects, and that is due to your work. So your work is what donors are supporting, and that's why I come to you once a year here at this event to talk to you about what we've done with the money that you earned. So, what we did in 2011-12, the first thing and the most obvious thing that the Wikimedia Foundation does is support the global projects, the site infrastructure, servers, and bandwidth. In 2011-12, we went from about 400 million unique visitors. Um, this is not counting the mobile audience, but just the audience to the main website. We went from about 400 million to just under 500 million. So we're going to hit a half a billion unique visitors. Probably, I am guessing, there's a summer slump, but towards the fall. And so the Wikimedia Foundation supported that growth in readership. And how do we do it? We do it primarily through people. So you probably recognize, I hope you recognize some of these folks. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation now has a staff of 119 people, not all of them working in our San Francisco office, but many of them working in our San Francisco office with other folks um, scattered in other parts of the world. This is just 16 of the staff members. Not all of these folks are here at Wikimania. I think Tim is not here, and there might be one or two other people. Gabrielle Vick, I think, is not here. Um, but you know many of these folks. You've seen them around. They've done lots of workshops over the last couple of days. This is what the money goes to. It goes to supporting people. Half our staff is an engineering organization, and the other half of the staff, roughly a quarter, is um, <coughs> accountants and lawyers and um, various forms of administration administrative support and then the other quarter is what i would characterize as people uh, doing people work so people working directly with community members um, uh, kind of herding cats and supporting community members in a variety of ways i'm going to recap 2011-12 this is the part where i fall in the pit <laughs> So again, I'm not going to do it justice, right? 120 people working for a period of a year. I will have these slides um, up on the Wikimedia Foundation website after the presentation. And you also obviously have access to all the other materials that the Wikimedia Foundation publishes. So we publish our financial statements. We publish uh, our annual reports. When the year closes, we go back and write up what was done during the year. And we also publish uh, the annual plan. The 2012-13 plan is not published yet, but it will be probably within about a week. And yes, you can photograph this if you want to look at it at your leisure afterwards. I will run you through it sort of quickly. So 25% increase in readership from 400 to 500 million unique visitors, we supported that. Uh, the visual editor, which is a project we began last year, which will enable people to edit the projects without needing to learn wiki syntax. The visual editor, yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> the visual editor has been uh, released with save edit capability based on a new parser in a restricted namespace on MediaWiki.org. And I'll talk a little bit later about our plans for the visual editor in the coming year. Um, we're doing global education work, and I think that everybody in the audience who's wearing the red t-shirt is involved with the global ed work, is that correct? So maybe you guys raise your hands. Um, there's a bunch of staff here, who, a couple of staff here who do that work, and then a lot of volunteers. So the global ed work is being done in 12 countries around the world. And when I asked Frank Schulenberg um, how many countries we were operational in, he said, well, the staff is active in about four countries, but there's an additional eight countries that are being driven by volunteers doing similar work. And he said, I can't claim to be responsible for that. They're doing it on their own. That actually is fabulous. That's exactly how it should be, right? So the work that the staff team is doing is um, catalyzing and making possible a lot of volunteer activity around the world. 
the Global Ed Project, for anybody who doesn't know, it's uh, Wikipedians working with university professors, teachers, who are assigning Wikipedia article writing as classwork for their students, supported by campus ambassadors and um, online ambassadors. And in 2011-12, the Global Ed work added 19 million characters to Wikipedia, which is, I think, something around four or maybe five million words, which, if I did my math right last night when I looked this up, is about eight copies of War and Peace. So you can imagine it's a stack like this. And importantly, yeah. <laughs> and importantly, uh, the global ed work, we have a gender gap that has been the subject of a lot of talk at this conference. And the global ed work is about 50% female participation. Yeah. We got a lot of work done this year um, in mobile. So the mobile platform has been redeveloped. We have an Android app now. And mobile page views went up through the year 187%, so up to 2.08 billion page views every month. And we launched a project called Wikipedia Zero. And the purpose of Wikipedia Zero is to make Wikipedia available for people on their mobile phones in the global south with no data charges. So people can access Wikipedia for free in developing countries. That project has made Wikipedia available for millions of people around the world in the global south. We have editor recruitment activity underway in India and Brazil, and we're just getting started in the Middle East, North Africa. Wikimedia Labs is launched and exceeding its participation targets. Our internationalization, I'm going quickly now, our internationalization team has made significant improvements, particularly in the Indic languages, and is also creating new translation tools. And we've done a lot of work um, in the area that we call new editor engagement. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that stuff. It, who here is familiar with mood bar slash feedback dashboard? Okay, great, so I'm gonna show you a little bit of that stuff. Um, we've done the article feedback tool version five is released now. Do you know that? Do you know what that is? Okay. Um, what? <laughs> You're so far away. <laughs> um, we also have a new pages uh, feed tool and we've, got a, we've done a lot of research experiments and lots of small projects. We did uh, a study on warnings and welcoming and the effect of different kinds of warnings and welcomings. We did an experiment in which we emailed lapsed editors to encourage them to come back, which again is something that a lot of sites do routinely, reflexively. They will email you 50 times a day. We experimented with once emailing people to see if it would encourage them to return, which it did. Um, and we have the Tea House, which was discussed yesterday, I think, in the uh, fellowships presentation, which is just a warm, welcoming space for new people. Now, having said that, having done all that, um, editor retention, the editor retention problem has not been solved. This is our single biggest challenge. Looking at the statistics over the past year, we think that we have slowed the decline. So the combined total of all the activities that the Wikimedia Foundation has been doing, and also that community members have been doing, we think has slowed the decline, but it has not reversed it, and it has not yet even halted it. That's our single biggest challenge. The one ray of light uh, on editor retention is the upload wizard. So we uh, made it easier to um, upload images to commons. Has anyone here benefited from that? It's become significant good, yes, <laughs> very good. Um, and, uh, and that increased image uploads 27% over the course of the year. And we saw in, in, in partnership in parallel with that, the fantastic Wiki Loves Monuments competition caused, <laughs> yes. <laughs> caused a, a visible spike in image uploads in September 2011, which was when that competition was kind of at its peak. And I think that that is the first time we've ever manufactured a spike. We, the, the collective, the Wikimedia community, it's the first time that anything that we have done has actually like stunted the numbers in a way that's visible. And I'll show you that screen, I think. So upshot, if we stand back and we look at our 2015 goals, how are we doing against our 2015 goals? We want to increase readership. Readership is up. Everything is trending in the right direction. We want to increase the quantity of material that the projects offer. 
we write new articles all the time. Quantity is up, that's good. English Wikipedia celebrated four million articles yesterday. Congratulations. <laughs> I saw, that, I saw that somebody tweeted, they tweeted, 60 of them are mine. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe seven are mine. Yay! <laughs> um, and we, uh, and we, we want to increase quality. And I mean, it's axiomatic, right, that quality increases over time. As more people edit articles, they get better and better and better. And we do have uh, some measures, some sort of partial measures, showing that quality is, in fact, increasing. Participation, single biggest challenge, number of editors continues to go down. And then we aspire to broaden editor diversity, particularly with women and particularly with editors in the global south. Those numbers are flat. We do see some uh, signs of light, some signs of possibility, but we have not yet moved the needle on those numbers. So clearly, the biggest challenge for the Wikimedia movement, not just the Wikimedia Foundation, but the Wikimedia movement, is um, editor numbers and editor diversity. And I, I might want to stop for a second here and say, I've been so pleased um, at Wikimania this year because every year I see the community and, and the conversations and the workshops getting sharper and more focused and, and more kind of aligned. And this year, really, I, I saw so many conversations happening about recruiting new editors and about broadening the diversity of the community. This is not work that the Wikimedia Foundation can do by itself, right? We need um, the editors to be engaged with the challenge with us. And this year, I saw a lot of conversation about it. And I was actually kind of pleased to see a couple times somebody would call out in the room, you know, new editors, who's visited the tea house, who just joined us this year. And they got spontaneous rounds of applause. And I thought that was really, really cool. So I think, we're, I think we're, we're, we're getting our heads around the solutions and how to fix the problem, and I think everybody is seized with understanding why it matters and why we want to do this. Um, so, like a true Wikipedian, I will now focus on where we're failing. <laughs> <laughs> So these are the numbers, and that, by the way, that red spike, that's Wiki Loves Monuments, okay? That's Commons. So uh, these are the numbers, and as you can see, they're flat, right? They're, they're a little bit up for some language versions, they're a little bit down for others, but they're effectively um, in, in a very, very slow, subtle decline. So we talk at the Wikimedia Foundation, we've done tons of research, tons of analysis into why active editors are in decline. And there are a lot of different ways that you could slice the problem and define the problem. You could break it down in different ways. I um, have taken a crack at breaking it down in a way that I think is fairly simple and fairly high level, but really um, uh, sort of describes the problem. So this, by the way, uh, these happy, sad faces, this is what Mood Bar looks like. So what Mood Bar is, is we, we run a little tiny survey for new editors, I think after their fifth edit or something like that. They, for the first time? Thank you. Okay, and so what we do is we just ask them, how are you feeling? And we ask them to talk to us a little bit. And uh, more recently, we've um, introduced the ability to talk back to the new editors, and so now there's a, a, a sort of core team of volunteers who are actually helping them with their problems. And we offer them three choices. They can be uh, sad, they can be confused, or they can be happy. And so these are some of the sad and confused uh, editors. So the first problem we, we all know really well, and that's poor usability, right? It's just too difficult to learn wiki syntax. It's a barrier to participation that does no good and eliminates people who otherwise could be good contributors. The second challenge I am characterizing as lack of discoverability. Sometimes I talk about it as serendipity. And what that is, you can see this guy in the upper right, and he says, I need something to work on. Right? We don't make it obvious how you can help. It takes people a long time to figure out what are wiki projects and how can I find them? How can I sign up for the WICNIC? You know, how do I know there's a copy editing drive going on? We need to be better at connecting people to um, activities that they can participate in. Um, the third uh, challenge is warnings and reversions. We know that the average new editor uh, gets warned a lot more and gets reverted a lot more than they did in the early days of the projects. There are a whole lot of contributing factors to it. We know why it's the case, but we also know that it's very discouraging for new people. The fourth factor, which is kind of the flip side of the third, is a lack of support and coaching. 
So we know that in the early days of Wikipedia, people would talk one-on-one -on -one frequently with each other. The community was small enough that you could reach out and have a conversation with somebody. If you were having a problem, somebody would help you get unstuck. They would coach you, they would teach you things. That happens less and less. There was a presentation the other day about our help pages, which are massive and contain all possible wanted information and then some. Um, but they're daunting for new people, and it's not the same as, uh, as interpersonal interactions. And then the last issue, similarly again, is policy craft and complexity, and we all know what that looks like. And there's this sweet guy down at the bottom of the screen who says, Wikipedia has a lot of rules, and it consumes a lot of time to become familiar with it. And then he sweetly says, although I do understand that you need those rules, right? And it's true. I mean, we're writing an encyclopedia here, and so of course, you need to have policies like neutral point of view. People need to learn things like how to properly cite their articles, right? There is learning that has to be done, but the learning curve is extremely steep and it's extremely difficult and it's daunting for new people. So what's gonna fix the problem? It's the flip side, right? So these are the happy people, right? And it's, it's charming uh, to read what they're saying. So this guy says, when I finally got my article approved, I did a, I did a victory dance. Really, I did, right? Like, they want to help. They're so pleased to be here, right? I got some good help on my first try. I got a little help from another editor, and now I feel much more confident. And confidence is a thing that a lot of new editors talk about. They feel, they feel insecure. They're not sure if they're doing the right thing. So the answers to these challenges are better usability, so again, the visual editor and other initiatives that we're having underway in the coming year, better discoverability, and we're going to be doing quite a bit of work around notifications, alerts, and messaging. And so the purpose of that is, again, you know, the experience that we might have as editors, having been editors now for three, five, seven years, however long we've been doing it, we kind of, by that point, have a customized um, experience for ourselves where we are getting site notices about meetups and we are getting invited to the copy editing drive and we are getting invited to participate in different kinds of activities. We want to make it much, much easier uh, for new people to have those same experiences and get invited into things. Um, kinder reversions with positive feedback, we're doing some work on that too. More expressions of love and support. This is the wiki love kind of thing. Um, and policy simplification. These are what the, the activities that are going to solve the problem. And this is how they break down. So the first two chunks of work are clearly in the bailiwick of the Wikimedia Foundation, right? We're going to build the visual editor, etc. Your role in that, if I may say, is um, to not impede that work, right? I mean, we, we're, we're, we're developing um, the, the functionality in, in, in collaboration with the community, and we have folks whose job is to liaise with community members and make sure that the things that we're building work for the community and will support them in the ways that they need to be supported. But really, we could be very slow in our development of this stuff depending on how many conversations we have to have about how to roll things out and et cetera. But really, um, your job there, I think, is to support the Wikimedia Foundation and let it make these changes. And then um, the bottom three pieces here are really areas in which the community itself needs to lead. And the Wikimedia Foundation can support, and we're building tools, and we want to help. But really, these are community issues where the community wants to take the lead, needs to take the lead. Okay. All right, this is the only other big daunting slide, so I'm, I risk again falling into the pit. So the 2012-13 plan, it continues our focus on editor retention because that is the problem that we are not collectively yet solving. We've done lots of groundwork, there's lots of infrastructure, things will start to pay off, but that is where we need to focus our efforts. Mostly we're going to do it by adding engineering resources to important priority projects. So the visual editor, um, we're hoping to have a limited English Wikipedia launch by December. <laughs> it's ambitious. The team thinks we can do it. Um, and we're going... <laughs> <laughs> and we want to have it ready for default use on all the wikis by July. That doesn't mean it will be on all the wikis, but it will be ready for the wikis. Uh, the editor engagement projects, they're going to focus their work on notifications, alerts, and messaging, like I described a minute ago. 
The editor experimentation teams are going to run 15 experiments over the course of the year. The most successful of them, they are going to productize. I was warned that people would um, uh, raise their eyebrows when I use the word productize. It just means we're going to make it real, right? Like if they do something and it looks promising, we're going to do it for real for the projects. Um, Wikimedia Labs, uh, we aspire to have tool server style uh, database replication and access for analytics data sets. Um, we're going to continue our work in India and Brazil and we're going to begin some work in Middle East, North Africa. Uh, we're going to continue our grants and fellowships work. So we fund a lot of activities by individuals, uh, people who are members of chapters and not members of chapters, and we fund chapters and other affiliated organizations. And we run fellowships programs where Wikipedians, Wikimedia editors can um, try out projects that they think will help us all achieve our goals. We're going to continue the work of the Global Education Project. We're going to focus on mobile photo uploading to coincide with the next iteration of Wiki Loves Monuments. We think we can really help by making it possible for people to upload photos through their phones. And we're going to focus a little bit on mobile contributions. And I, I don't think that people are ever going to edit Wikipedia articles or write Wikipedia articles using their mobile phones. Not so much because of tiny keyboards and tiny screens, although that is a consideration, but really because I think the act of writing is a reflective act, right? And you have books around you and you've got multiple tabs open and you're researching and you're thinking. And that's not the kind of thing that people are doing when they're waiting for a bus or standing in line at the bank or whatever with their phone. But having said that, we do think that there's some Q-type work that people can do from their phones page patrolling, um, image checking, things like that. And we want to support that because, of course, people are moving more and more to mobile and to tablet devices. And so we want to support them being able to do constructive, helpful Wikimedia work from their phones and tablets. Um, better multimedia usability generally. We're going to do more of the Wikipedia Zero partnerships, so more uh, partnerships with mobile firms to get free access for people in the global south to Wikipedia from their phones. And we're going to focus generally on better site performance and responsiveness. So we want to reduce response time and we want to reduce uh, the, the rendering time for pages. Sometimes, I'm sure you've noticed this, if you're on a really, really heavy article and you're editing it, it can be quite slow. And that's painful for people who want to fix that. Also, importantly, uh, in the coming year, and some of you attended a workshop about this, which I think was yesterday morning at the even more ungodly hour of 8 a.m., uh, we're going to launch the Funds Dissemination Committee. Can you raise your hand if you know what that is? Oh, that's good. That's, more, that's a lot more people than I would have guessed. So the Funds Dissemination Committee is um, a, a mechanism for disseminating funds throughout the Wikimedia movement in a way that will help us achieve our goals. It used to be that the Wikimedia Foundation made those decisions ourselves, right? Like, who got how much money. It was not a very thoughtful decision-making process. It wasn't very strategic. Um, and it wasn't very defensible. Like if we tried to say why this group got this and this group got something else, it, there was no real rigorous justification behind it. So what we want to do in the coming year is establish a committee of Wikimedia volunteers. Again, the premise being, like, it's your money, right? You earned the money. And so we're going to put together a group of people to be a kind of proxy for the community at large to help make decisions about where the money should go throughout the movement and what kinds of work it should support. That's a heavy burden on a small group of people, and clearly they can't represent the interests of the global community themselves. So there's going to be mechanisms for um, ordinary editors to get involved and to, to give feedback and all sorts of stuff. We're going to make it as porous and as inclusive as we possibly can. But we think that having, having a jury or a team of people who come from the community and understand its work and understand its mission and are committed to helping it meet its goals um, will be better than the current system, and we hope, in the fullness of time, is going to fund a really strong ecosystem of effective organizations running really good programmatic work. So that's 2012-13. I think I have two slides left. The next slide is even more daunting and even more wanting to be photographed if you're wanting to look at these things later, and you probably won't be able to read it from where you sit. So what's that said? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> So, all this is, is I just walked you through the strategic priorities for 2012-13, um, but what the strategic priorities don't make visible is 
all the ordinary work of running um, the, the, the sites and making sure that the sites are okay and running an ordinary 501c3 organization. And so this is an attempt um, in my nightmares <laughs> to kind of um, show the entire array of activities that the Wikimedia Foundation does. I won't talk you through it, but I will kind of give you the, the kind of outline of it. So, you know, at the Wikimedia Foundation, we, we, we handle basic site and 501c3 operations. And so that's stuff like um, managing the trademark portfolio, the domain names, um, you know, installing the servers and paying the bandwidth bill. We also support the volunteer community. And we do that by providing legal interpretations for volunteers. We supported uh, the anti-SOPA protest. Um, we, uh, our engineers dedicate 20% of their time to volunteer code review, that kind of activity. We also aspire to grow new volunteers, and that's the part that we talk about the most, but um, it, supporting the existing community is just as much energy, just as much resource going into it. And then the last thing that we do, and in some ways I think the most important thing, is um, we support the development of a global ecosystem of entities, right? The Wikimedia Foundation is not the only organization uh, supporting the Wikimedia movement. We've got probably by now 45 chapters, 40 to 45 chapters. Um, and we aspire to have a lot more organizations helping us um, all do our work. And so the Wikimedia Foundation does a variety of things, you know, with the grants and now the Funds Dissemination Committee. We give some legal advice to chapters. We do things like that. Um, our goal is to support and nurture and foster a global ecosystem of organizations so that we can be much more powerful and much more effective together as, as an ecosystem than we could be with just a small number of organizations. So that's longer term work, but it's really important work. One last slide. Um, so this is my accountability presentation. Other measures that the Wikimedia Foundation has for, um, for sort of managing or understanding accountability, we do a, a editor survey twice a year, every year. The last one, uh, the results are back in, was December of 2011. And so one of the questions that we ask is we ask you this. So we say, um, on a zero to 10 scale, if zero is not at all good, and 10 is extremely good, how would you rate the performance of each of the following in contributing to the Wikimedia movement? Can you read that from where you sit? Okay, so a number of things strike me when I look at that. Anybody sitting near the front, would you like to tell me what strikes you when you look at those results? Modesty. Sorry? Modesty. <laughs> <laughs> what? Exactly, right? So when I look at this slide, she said self-criticism. When I look at this slide, so here's the, here's the thought process I went through when I looked at this. I looked at it and I thought, oh good, they like the Wikimedia Foundation best, yay. <laughs> and then I thought, 6.95. <laughs> I thought, that's not very good. <laughs> we can do better than that. And then I remembered that um, when we do the article feedback uh, rating of articles, uh, readers rate our articles really high, and readers are like, it's awesome, I love it, you guys do an amazing job. And, and, and when Wikipedians rate our articles, we're very, very critical, and we're like, you know, it was not perfect. <laughs> and, so, and so I think we're hard markers, so I've decided that 6.95 is pretty good. <laughs> um, second thing that struck me when I looked at this was I thought, um, 6.04 for the chapters, that is not very good, right? And then I thought, that is noisy data, right? Because presumably most of the people filling out this survey don't live in a country where there is a chapter, or maybe they don't know very much about how the other chapters operate or whatever. So I decided to discard that in my own head as a result, because I think it's not very useful. But what really struck me was 5.73 for my own contribution, right? So the editors, the people in this room, the people around the world editing Wikipedia are thinking to themselves, Wikimedia Foundation's doing pretty well, volunteers overall doing well, chapters doing fine, I'm not doing very well, they're thinking to themselves. And I thought that was so interesting. So I was talking about it with some folks in the office, with Stephen Walling and some other people who had some theories about it. And um, people thought that maybe what was happening was 
our fundraising messaging uh, paints editors as heroes, right? As extraordinary people working tirelessly and selflessly to make the world a better place and bring free knowledge to everybody, right? And, which we are. <laughs> but we also know that when we're at home in our pajamas actually editing articles, right? <laughs> We, we, we might be like having some kind of feisty debate on some kind of dispute resolution issue, arguing angrily with other people. Or we might be scratching our own itch, like I'm kind of curious about this topic and one output of that is an article, but that doesn't make me some kind of hero. I'm just kind of reading stuff, I'm kind of interested. Or we might be, you know, like, like reverting vandalism as though we were playing a first person shooter video game, right? So, so we don't feel like heroes, we don't feel altruistic, we don't feel like we're amazing, awesome, you know, um, super idealistic people. We're just people with a hobby who are doing something that we find fun. And as Jimmy always used to say, you know, if it wasn't fun, we wouldn't do it, right? So I think people don't recognize themselves in the picture that the Wikimedia Foundation frequently paints of what editors are like. And so the, the last thing that I wanted to say to you folks was, um, you know, no matter how you feel when you're editing, no matter whether you feel heroic and altruistic, you are heroic and altruistic. The work that this community is doing. <laughs> the work that you're doing is changing the world. You're making the world a better place for all kinds of people. I get their letters, I go to conferences, people shower me with love and praise, people write me emails of love and praise, they respond to our donation requests with love and praise, and that love and praise is for you. So thank you. <laughs> you don't get to go anywhere. <laughs> So for those, of you who, for those of you who don't know, this is Sue's five-year anniversary with the Wikimedia Foundation. So, so that means you have to hear me talk about it for a little while. And Sue has to actually stay up here and get the, some more of the, the, the uh, love showered on here. So the first time Sue was on the stage at Wikimania was five years ago at our conference in Taipei. Uh, she had just been hired a few weeks ago uh, for a job that had seemed impossible for any one person to fill. And uh, thinking back about what we were looking for at that time, we were a really young organization. There were about you know, two or three staff people in the office. And so I think, all, I think almost all of them are here today, actually, still. But uh, we needed somebody who had a variety of skills. And the first thing we were looking for was somebody who could uh, fill the general executive director role. Uh, we need somebody who knew how to manage people and how to run a small organization to a high professional standard to do all the things that you would normally expect an executive of a nonprofit to do. Um, we needed somebody with long experience in industries kind of like ours, you know, who knew nonprofits, who knew media, who knew the internet, uh, but who would, able to be, who would be able to understand an organization that was still doing something that was still pretty new at the time. Uh, we need somebody who could be a public representative for us in the wider world, who could interface with other people who were doing more traditional things, who didn't really understand the Wikimedia community, the kind of unique nature of what we were, but who, who could also respect us as equals to any of those other people that she was talking to, who knew that we were really the, the voice and the heart behind the organization, and we were as important as any other CEO that she would be talking to. And finally, we needed somebody who could come into a community with its own unique culture, very nerdy, very smart, very passionate about the goals that we've all come together in support of and take them on as our own. And that seemed like an almost impossible thing to ask of anybody. So Jan Bart and I met Sue one afternoon in New York, the first people to meet her in person really, and we gave her her first in-person interview. For the first thing we noticed about her is that she came in with a binder about this thick full of printouts from everything she could find about Wikipedia and Wikimedia. Printouts from the mailing lists, from the community notice boards, from everything she could find other people had said about Wikimedia, and even from the troll boards, actually, I seem to remember, which was great. Was like <laughs> and she talked about us with excitement and, uh, and with understanding. Which she, and we looked at each other and we thought, like, this is amazing. We didn't, we didn't even expect that. <laughs> 
we tried to give her a little bit of warning about what she was getting into, and she told us, of course, she understood that you know, we were unique, we were very different, and she was ready for the challenge. And, a, <laughs> and about a year or two later, she came to me and she said, you know, when I told you that, I had no idea. <laughs> well, five years ago, we hired Sue, hoping that she could be a leader for the foundation, to run the office, to help us be more professional and all the things that an executive director could be expected to do. She's become not only our, our executive director, but a leader of the movement. And we had no idea. So thank you for five years. Hi, folks. Thank you for that. Thanks, to Five years. Wow. Uh, I'm Jay Walsh, and I'm going to uh, moderate the uh, board question and answer the section um, somewhat briskly uh, because we want to stay um, somewhat in schedule. So we're going to go a little bit over schedule, um, maybe by about 10 or 15 minutes, just as an FYI. Uh, so I'd like to uh, invite the board to come up, please. Please come up, the board, uh, Wikimedia Board of Trustees for our Q&A session. Give, give him a hand now. That's nice, that's nice. And before we get started, and just so you know, so I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. I work with Sue as well. Um, you might, some of you might have seen me uh, on the other day when we were starting. Um, I've had the pleasure of uh, working with the board. I work with the board almost every day uh, of my work day, so I actually quite enjoy that. Um, before we get underway, though, so I have a quick announcement. If you're interested in learning how to organize Wiki Loves Monuments events, and I know some of you are, uh, there's going to be a meetup uh, today at lunch in the Balcony Terrace. Nicholas, is the Balcony Terrace? Is that correct? Wiki Loves Monuments in the Balcony Terrace. There we go. Okay. Our Wikimedia Board of Trustees. Okay. I'm going to do a little, a little tiny bit of administrative so people know what you guys are and what you're doing. This is the, uh, the, these are all volunteers, these folks. Um, there are 10 seats on the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. Um, and Jan Bart, when he starts, will sort of uh, describe why, there, why it may not look like there's, everybody's here. Um, three of the seats of the board are elected by folks like you, by the community of uh, the Wikimedia projects. Many of you, I'm sure, have um, been a part of the online election process when that's taken place. Two of these seats are held by appointments from the Wikimedia chapters. Um, and one of these seats is held for the founder of the project, um, who is not here today. Uh, and then four of those seats are appointed by the board members yourselves. So just to give you a sense of how these folks are brought to, the, to this table. So I'm going to hand it over to Jan Bart on this end, just to do some very quick introductions. And uh, I'll try to keep track of time, but just very quick, brief introductions, and then we'll get to the questions. Thanks, Jan Bart. I gather it has to be brief and quick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I'm Jan Bart de Vrede. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. Um, in my other job, um, I work for the Kennesset Foundation Netherlands, which is all about education IT, and my specialty is open educational resources. So the two worlds overlap tremendously, and every time I come from here, I come back with stories like, we should do it that way, we should do this way. So I'm very excited. Um, it's also my job to excuse uh, three other board members who aren't here. Jimmy explained that his project Ada was, of course, distracting him and it forced him to come back, uh, to fly back early this year. Um, both Matt and Stu, the two other appointed members like me, um, have new jobs and the balance of family and uh, had to attend our Wikimedia board meeting at the beginning on Wednesday. So they had to leave early as well and I'm hoping they'll be able to make it later uh, and be there in the next Q and A's because we always try and get everybody here. Thank you. Hey, hello, I'm Kat Walsh, and I'm the uh, newly appointed board chair. Uh, I've been a member of the, uh, I've been a member of the board since 2006 and a Wikimedian since 2004. Uh, I actually live in the area, so this is the first Wikimania I've gotten to go to on the bus, and I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> 
And it, when I'm not volunteering for Wikimedia, I'm an attorney and I actually just started working for Creative Commons, which I'm also happy about. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ting Chen. I was um, elected since 2008, and I was in the last two years the board chair. Um, yesterday, I just want to tell a very short uh, his, um, story. Yesterday, I went to a meetup of the LGBT uh, Wikimedians, and one of the friends told me where he has a colleague, and he looked into the foundation page and said, oh my god, the, um, the, the Wikipedia is run by a Chinese. And I said, well, if you know the truth, the Wikipedia is run by a Chinese guy who is uh, gay and uh, who lives in Germany and who, uh, who loves... <laughs> who loves the man, uh, lamb masala. What I want to say is that um, we have a very diverse community and what the board did in the last years is to increase this diversity to, to um, respect every, everyone who wants to join us. And um, what, what the guy gets wrong is that it is, the site is not run by me, then, uh, but by, by the person who by the diverse person who is out there, and that's you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Bishaka, and I live in Mumbai, India, and I got onto the board in 2010, March, so I'm about two years and three months old. I'm currently the board secretary. The work that I do in my day job is sort of promoting women's voices through media, art, and culture. And I always find it very interesting that I sort of work half the day predominantly with women, and then in the Wikiverse, I interface predominantly with men. So it's sort of like <laughs> the yin and yang of my life. Um, and I have to say what keeps me going, even in the moments when it's really difficult, is actually the extraordinary energy, the passion, as well as some of the chaos and diversity that I really enjoy. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sam Klein, SJ. I've been editing since 2004, and um, I hosted Wikimania in Boston with the New England Wikimedians back in 2006, so it's awesome to see it in the US again. Thanks. And, um, in my, in my other life, I work with children, giving them access to the internet and to information with one laptop per child. Um, and it's been really great in the last year to see the way that we've expanded uh, people in our community from places that didn't have access. So. Hi, I'm Alice Wiegand. I serve on one of the two chapter selected board seats. And this is my first Wikimania as being a board member. It is quite exciting. And I'm happy to have you all here because what we do is we want to provide an environment where you can do your best. Thank you. Hello. My name is Patricia Lorente. Uh, with, uh, Alice, we are the two selected, uh, chapter selected board members. Um, I live in Argentina. Uh, I was founder and president of Wikimedia Argentina. And in my real life, I work at La Plata National University. Hi, I'm Arne from Germany, Frankfurt. Um, in my professional life, I'm a, a consultant in communi digital communications, and I've been on the board for the past three and a half years as one of the chapter selected uh, board members. Um, and actually before that, uh, I was for quite some time a co-founder, vice president, ex and executive director for Wikimedia Germany. So in the end, after I think eight years in an official capacity, I think it's really time to get some new perspective and maybe I even start editing Wikipedia again. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm especially grateful for the chapters uh, that they have selected two such excellent uh, successors for the Board of Trustees. Uh, and I'm really glad that Alice and Patricio are there and ready to take over. Thank you. 
I'm Phoebe Ayers. I am from California. I'm a librarian, and I've been editing since 2003. And um, I have been on the board for two years. I was in one of the chapter seats. My term also just ended. I agree with Arne. We have great successors. Thank you so much. That's your Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. Thank you, everybody. Um, but we're not done. So this year we wanted to try something a little different, although there is a bit of a trend in the, this format of suggesting questions via something called handwriting on something called paper. Um, mostly because we wanted to take full advantage of the time and because we want you guys to be able to get back and enjoy the rest of the day. So here are the questions. There are about 52, which is a pretty small percentage of, uh, of questions, but that's okay. Um, sorting them out is kind of like playing Magic the Gathering. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to not attack you guys with, a, with a, some sort of dragon. Um, so I'm gonna uh, actually just ask these questions. So you know, these questions are also gonna be posted um, probably on the Foundation Wiki, but also on Meta, so that you'll be able to see all the questions. Um, the questions covered an enormous range of, of topics. Well, maybe about eight. Um, there are some beautiful drawings, thank you very much. Um, and some, some, some very important questions that you'll get to see all of the really less obvious questions later. So I'm gonna jump right in, folks, and we're gonna ask each of you, maybe if somebody wants to reflect on this question, by all means, you can raise your hand or gesture towards me. So the, this question came in, and these are the actual questions. We haven't reprocessed them. Folks, what ideas do you have for rewarding the many quiet, polite, reasonably competent, entirely well-meaning contributors who have never caused a fuss? Um, often it's the troublemakers and agendized folks that seem to collect awards. So I'd like to throw that question, did you all catch that question? Um, essentially, uh, what, what thoughts do you have for rewarding the many quiet, polite, reasonable, and competent, uh, well-meaning folks? Can you, can you hear me all right? Jamie, can't hear you at all. You can't hear me at all because the sound is pushing out that way. So folks, what I'm asking you is, do you have a, 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 <laughs> a plan for, <laughs> the speakers point that way, uh, for rewarding polite, quiet, well-meaning uh, Wikimedia contributors, because a lot of times it's the sort of agendized folks and the less polite people who get a lot of awards. This is the recognition. Does someone want to give that a, a shot? Jan Bart. We try to make them chair. That's one strategy. That's true. SJ, did you want to add something to that? Well, that I think a number of the of projects are starting those kinds of recognition and reward and reward projects. I'm not sure that any of them has really taken off yet, but certainly the, the tea room and, and, and similar projects are trying to identify people who are very good at, uh, at, at, being, at being awesome and polite and giving them, and giving them recognition. Absolutely. And Kat, yes, go ahead. I think that though, one thing I'd love people to do who recognize those voices that are quiet and competent and wonderful and who aren't being heard is to amplify those voices when you hear them, to, to draw attention that they don't want to draw attention to themselves. Indeed. Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to keep going. So many questions. In some countries, and I'll, I'll repeat this question for you guys, so don't strain yourselves to listen to this. In some countries, public organizations, uh, either governmental or non-governmental, uh, want to take control over Wikipedia. Uh, what do you think about it? Um, uh, the control could be interpreted in a couple of ways. Let me, let me give this to the, to the board. In some countries, public organizations, governmental or non-governmental, want to take control over Wikipedia. What do you think about it? Vishaka, please go ahead and answer that for us. Okay, I mean, my personal view is um, in the absence of specific examples, I can give you a general opinion of, about what I feel about it. I think the issue is to really look at this, to really try and convert organizations that are trying to take control into organizations that can collaborate or become partners, right? And that holds for organizations within the Wikimedia movement as well as organizations outside of the Wikimedia movement. Because given the decentralized manner in which Wikipedia and the sister projects are written, I don't see scope for sort of the classic notion of control at any level. I see the scope for a sort of collaboration, decreasing sort of individual control while maintaining some and trying to work together. Right. Ting? Uh, Ting or Kat? I think that one thing that we can do, and something that we're already doing, is have structures that make it impossible to get that control even if you want it. 
For example, we don't have editors who can be bought, uh, regular editors who can be bought off uh, because everybody can edit. Uh, we don't depend on any single source for all of our funding so that nobody can control our funding. And I think that the, the more that we develop those structures so that we really are not de dependent on any one thing and we really cannot be uh, controlled by any one thing, uh, the stronger we are and the more able we are to prevent ourselves from being taken over. Uh, I wonder if this person was also wondering about some of the kind of political actions that we've taken also. Uh, sometimes governments, for example, who want to either influence or create structures that make it difficult for us to, to maintain that independent voice. And some of that is just really thinking very hard about uh, when something is going to present a threat to the way that we are and the way that we try to operate, uh, how best to respond uh, uh, when something is really threatening that. We use our voice responsibly. We don't use it every time that something might possibly come up. But when it's really worthwhile, then we save up all that goodwill and all that credibility that we have, and we use it where it will do the uh, most good. Thanks, Kat. Great. We're going, to move, we're going to go over at least about 10 minutes, folks, just so you know. There is a 30-minute break between this session and a subsequent session. Um, this is a quick question, a comment. We had a few comments. Um, somebody, somebody suggested removing the word elderly uh, from the effort to appeal to 60-plus uh, or older users. Not a good term for uh, involving or enrolling people. This is the comment to remove the term, remove the term elderly from outreach towards older people and individuals. So we're capturing these comments. OK, there's a stack of questions here. Um, about, frankly, how is, is, it, is it viable to fund sort of the non-Wikipedia projects? And they're all kind of in that similar vein. Uh, could, could, could independent projects or could the other projects other than Wikipedia raise their own funds, uh, the other Wikimedia projects? Ask that. The question is whether or not the Wikimedia projects themselves outside of Wikipedia could be empowered to do their own fundraising or have resources directed specifically towards them, non-Wikipedia, presumably. That's one for the board. SJ is reaching for the mic. Go ahead. So the, the grant making process is becoming much more much more open to projects of all sizes, and there are now there are now ways or organizations that aren't chapters, but organizations that might represent a type of knowledge gathering or even a sister project to say we would like to regularly ask for for funds or ask for support. And I think the the bottleneck at this point is being able to frame projects and frame ideas in a way that they could be approved or budgeted for. So I, it, in that sense, the answer is definitely yes. Great. And I think currently all the projects do do some of their own fundraising. The question is whether it's identified and pooled separately. And uh, thanks, S.J. And Jan Bard at the end of a question, or point two. Yeah. Um, yeah, so during the past year, we've spent a lot of time on thinking on how to distribute the money we get uh, from different geographic locations to everyone in the movement. And one of the big things there being, wherever, regardless of where the money is raised, where can we best spend it? And I think that rule applies exactly to this situation as well. Regardless of where the money is raised, be it Wikipedia or wherever, spending it in the most useful uh, place for, to further our mission is what we should be doing. And that could be any project. Thank you, Jan Bart. There are a couple of uh, question or points here about, um, this one is asking, could we please apply the new features which are on English Wikipedia, presumably many of the new features, um, to other wikis, specifically Arabic Wikipedia. And there are several questions about that, specifically retain, relating to bringing some of these features and functionality to the other projects. More of a comment, I'm gonna share that with the, with the board. These are comments uh, requesting more of the features in English Wikipedia, sort of the new features coming to the other language projects. Um, Anything you guys would want to instantly reflect on that or quickly reflect on that? Yes, Phoebe, go ahead. let's do it. Yes. Um, you have to ask, and I think that would be great. Great. One quick suggestion here, uh, one for maybe the Wikimedia organi Wikimania organizers next year. Someone's asking for an app um, for, with schedules and maps, which is an, an excellent comment. Okay, there's uh, a lot of questions here relating to chapters association and the funds dissemination committee. Did you guys read my lips on that one? I think you could, yeah. Chapters, funds dissemination. Um, the, most of these questions are, um, this sort of sums them up. Are you satisfied with the progress towards the implementation of the funds dissemination committee? And for those of you, as you heard some Sue talking about that, sometimes referred to it as FDC. Are you satisfied with the progress towards the implementation of the funds dissemination committee? Jan Bart's waving his finger, so what do you think, Jan Bart? 
So Ting Stu and me served on the uh, uh, advisory committee for the funds dissemination committee, which sounds, it, the titles are becoming longer and longer. But it's a temporary thing to think about uh, how we wanted to structure this. And we had a, a really good meeting uh, um, in June, and I think we, we approved our charter um, two days ago during our board meeting, sorry, three days ago, time flies. Um, and I think I'm really happy where we are right now because I, I didn't think we would get this far. I think the hard part is still to come. Uh, we have to start, uh, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. But I think we got, uh, with the help of a lot of thoughtful people who are either on the advisory group or who spent uh, a lot of time researching and doing, uh, commenting on everything on Meta, thank you Thomas Dalton, um, we really got a really good proposal. I think we, we got there for a large part and I think we, uh, we have to see now what, what works and what doesn't and we've built in structures to make sure to evaluate that and change the structure if it needs to be, but I'm really happy and I think we're doing really well. Excellent. And, and sort of a follow-up question, uh, how do you see the board's relationship with the Chapters Association developing? And there are quite a few questions that actually kind of got to right to that point. How do you guys see the board's relationship with the Chapters Association developing? Your views on that, that relationship, Chapters Association. I see Alice. I think, like? Yes, I think the Chapters Association is one of the most important things that are happening these days uh, among the entities which are really, really important for the whole movement. Chapters are those core initiatives where ideas were born, where the energy is, uh, where the connection to the local communities is. So everything the chapters can do to grow, to get better, to uh, exercise how to manage their own work is really appreciated and we are looking very excited of what is happening there. Thanks Alice. Anyone else want to tackle that one? Okay. I'm going to move on to this one and then just two, two, two more quick questions because I also want to let some of the folks from the board speak quickly. Uh, there was an item, quote, term limit proposal. Could you elaborate on this? and what conclusions uh, to, came to this, on, to this subject. Did you hear it? No. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make sure everybody. <laughs> there is an item called term limit proposals. Could you elaborate on this? And what conclusions came from the discussion on the subject? Term limit proposals. Jan Bart's gonna say something about that. Yes, as, as I would be one of the people that I would reply to immediately. Um, there is actually a proposal that's still on the table. We're still working on the details, but um, it's considered to be good governance to um, implement some kind of term limits for board members. On the other hand, there are some unique situations here. We have three different factions that make up our entire board, which also uh, add to the mix. So we have to be careful not to sort of do, uh, create rules that sort of destroy the uniqueness of the board and force us to, for example, at some point, have a completely 80% uh, new board um, because elections went one way, communities to the, of chapter select seats went another way, and the appointed seats were just uh, reappointed in a different way as well. So we have to be very careful about it, but it, I'm, I think we're going to resolve that within a couple of months, if not the next meeting we have in a month and a half. Thanks, Jean Bart. Ting had raised his hand as well. Go ahead, Ting. Um, as Jan Bart said, I think um, everyone on the board is uh, in agreement that this is important um, thing to renew the board and um, there are uh, two things that uh, to be considered. The one thing is that um, the new renewal of the board and the other thing is that people build up knowledge, um, people come to board and need a long time to get um, get into the stuff uh, so that um, they, they, they can fully function and um, those two conflicting interests must be balanced. And personally, I think that um, I, I despise, um, I, I dislike politicians who, uh, who keep on and on and on and um, that is also the reason why I stepped down now at, as the chair and I will not recandidate next year uh, for the board of trustees so that other people can, can go on the board and uh, can take the stack and uh, work on. I have a, in the interest of time, we're gonna, I'm going to give you guys some chance, but this is a very important follow-up question to that, Ting, and I think it might be just one of the best questions I've seen. What the hell were you thinking when you decided to run for or join the board? Have you ever regretted that decision? 
I think you probably heard it, but... What the hell were you thinking <laughs> when you decided to run for or join the board? And have you regretted that decision? Not looking at the new members or anything like that, but who would like to, who would like to try that one out? Alice, if you raise your hand first on this side, go ahead. Well, or, I, I think go ahead. Many, many of us are asking ourselves the same question. <laughs> um, well, uh, particularly, I was asked to uh, nominate myself for the chapter selection process by my own chapters and uh, also from uh, another uh, Latin American chapters. And I took this as a commitment with them and with the whole movement. Thanks, Patricio. Someone in the back there. Kat, right, go ahead. Sure. What were you thinking? So from the, uh, from the other end of the experience spectrum on the board now, I'll say that I've asked myself that question probably 10,000 times. Uh, <laughs> and I, but nonetheless, it's been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life, just getting to see this organization grow and develop and all the different things that it's been doing. So. Wonderful. I'm going to hand it right back to you, Kat, um, for a couple more minutes. Uh, just very quickly, once again, these questions are going to be posted. Uh, keep an eye out probably on one of the mailing lists. We'll have those. Uh, and also, these folks are not going anywhere. They aren't going to stay on the, t you know, on the stage, I don't think. Um, they're going to be going to sessions. So see them, seek them out, and continue the conversation. Kat, over to you, please. Oh, great. So, uh one of, one of the favorite things that I get to do on the board is to thank everybody that, that has made everything possible. So uh, the first thank yous I'd like to give are to our departing board members, uh, Arna and Phoebe, for their several years of distinguished service. They've done so much. So much of it is not visible, but they've put in so much time and so much effort. So I'd really like to thank them. And to the rest of my colleagues on the board who are going to have to do this for <laughs> Sorry, I didn't uh, tell you that, Jan Bart. You're stuck. Uh, no. No. <laughs> for, for, for the next year, uh, thank you. Thank you so much to the Wikimania organizing team who has put this together. and thank us for the conferences, the board members. We had nothing to do with it. It was all their hard work and effort, and it just really come together. Uh, thank you to the staff and event volunteers who are helping put on this event, uh, everything. Uh, thank you to Wikimedia DC, who had the crazy idea of bidding for this conference last year. Everybody thought it was crazy. It, it still is crazy, but thank you for doing it so well. Uh, thank you to all the sponsors and partners who uh, worked with Wikimedia DC and the organizing uh, team to make this event possible. Without you, it would not have happened as well as it did. And finally, on behalf of the board, thank you to the participants in this event. Uh, this event doesn't exist for us. It exists for all of us. So thank you all for coming and making it. Thank you very much. And I'll hand it back to James. Thanks, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sue and the Board of Trustees, for your presentations. Uh, before I let you go across the street, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, today's the last day of Wikimania where our presentations were scheduled in advance, but tomorrow is our Wikimania Unconference, where you take the stage and decide what you want to talk about. We will go over the Unconference in more detail tomorrow at the Grand Ballroom at 10 o'clock. Next, I'd like to tell you about tonight's Wikimania celebration at Buffalo Billiards new, near DuPont Circle. Uh, doors open tonight at 8.30, with the party lasting from 9 until midnight. If you do not bring photo ID, you will not be drinking alcohol. I hope to see you there tonight. Now, this is very important. Everything that is listed as taking place in BETS takes place at the amphitheater, and everything taking place at the amphitheater is actually taking place in BETS. I do not know why this happened, but that's the way the world works. Now, let's show enjoy our last day of Wikimania. <laughs> <laughs>